Hello, Vinyl community, and thank you once again for tuning into Mike's Vinyl Experience. Thank you so much for being with me here today. I appreciate each and every one of you. Today's an exciting day. I'm going to be reviewing with you and doing a short comparison of Analog Productions as part of the Atlantic 75 series that they are redoing and repressing and remastering. Crosby, Stills, and Nash, their debut album from 1969. David Crosby, Stephen Stills, and Graham Nash. What a great album this is. Let's get started and take a look at the album and what we get on the inside. Okay, the album cover, as we've all grown to know from Analog Productions in this series that they are doing, is absolutely wonderful. It's a stellar copy. In fact, most of the ones that we've got, in fact, all the ones that I've got, uh, from this latest series, The Atlantic 75, have all been absolutely wonderful covers. This is no exception at all. The cover is very different though, however. It's more true to the actual cover that came out. It's not shiny. It's not, uh, uh, you know, soft to the touch. It's got texture to it, which is really kind of neat. It's a gatefold cover, and I'll open that up so hopefully you can see that uh, true to the original um, the back side of the cover just absolutely quality work uh, the album number that i got was 000763 um, what an excellent job analog productions is doing uh, with these covers I, I just think they're uh, incredibly great uh, what they're doing with them old style tip on type jacket. What an excellent rendering uh, from the original. This is a quality, quality uh, album cover. Um, let's take a look. I believe there's some other things in here that you get as part of your purchase. Let's kind of take a look at that. Of course, uh, Analog Productions gives you a little bit of a flyer on some of the releases that they've come out with or going to be coming out with and then there's also a little flyer in here uh, about the Atlantic uh, record 75th anniversary uh, an introduction that talks about those and then over here on this side uh, Chad Kassam he's uh, got a statement there talking about the process and so forth kind of a neat touch that they add with these covers and then of course as part of the original um, album they've got the lyric sheet i hope you can see that without getting gl uh, glare um uh, all the lyrics uh talks about a little bit about the musician on the on the songs uh excellent excellent touch really nice rendering in my opinion uh for your 60 dollars, you're getting a quality quality kip on type jacket by a gatefold, a dual pocket, it's exceptional. Uh, the quality for the money, I know it's expensive, but the quality for the money is very, very, very good. I can't emphasize that enough. Let's take a look at the vinyl. Um, it's 180 gram. Let's get to side one. Uh, there's only two songs on side one. Let's see if you can take a look at that. Hopefully it's not glaring, I don't know you can see that well this is 180 gram uh, 45 rpm uh, so there's two albums uh, in here cut uh, and mastered excuse me by Bernie Grundman uh, he's the one that did all the mastering let's just take a look at some of the songs um, before I get into the sound quality and really talk even a little bit about how I'm going to conduct uh, the comparison that I've done. Um, let's talk a little bit about the songs just for a quick second. Um, Sweet Judy Blue Eyes is one of the, the first song on side one, was really one of the big hits off the album, along with Marrakesh Express. Uh, of course, to me, and, and they're both great songs, I, I don't downplay that at all, but to me, Guinevere, uh, this is over on side two, uh, you Don't Have to Cry and pre road Downs are excellent, excellent songs. Moving to side C on the second album, 
wooden ships, lady of the island, helplessly hoping. That is a great, great, great song. Of course, side four, long time gone, and 49 bye-byes. Uh, all of the, the entire album is really, really good. If you're from the 60s era, or really the early 70s, uh, you'll know about these songs, and you'll know, you, and I'm sure, regardless of what era you're from, you'll have heard a lot of these songs. They are absolutely wonderful. This is great folk rock music. Uh, these three individuals did some wonderful music. I think this is just absolutely wonderful music. Now, about the sound of the album. The sound on the albums are absolutely stunning, to say the least. They are, but they are done very, very well. Uh, Bernie Grunman, uh, in remastering these albums, has done a phenomenal job. Uh, the songs that I critical listen to and that I will be conducting a comparison on are Sweet Judy Blue Eyes, Guinevere, You Don't Have to Cry, Pre-Road Downs, Wooden Ships, and Helplessly Hoping. Those are the songs that I kind of focused on uh, as I did my comparison to the other copies of, the, uh, of this great album that I have. But before we get into that, let me talk to you just a little bit about the sound of this album, uh, the Atlantic uh, Atlantic 75 Analog Productions uh, version. I, after putting it on and listening to it, I listened to this album before I started comparing. I listened to it about four times all the way through uh, side A through D. Uh, with the intent to get acquainted with the sound and the music. I've really been used to my standby that I listen to quite frequently, which is uh, one that I'll be comparing it to, is the classic records version. So I wanted to familiarize myself with the sound of this 45 RPM album. And one of the biggest things that I noticed immediately in the sound of the Analog Productions uh, version of this album and I think I've touched on this before in past albums, is the vinyl is pretty darn quiet. The vinyl really, I think, is, it's, it's there's just, there's no snaps, crackles, pops. You would, of course, you would never expect that from a brand new $60 album anyway. But the, but the sound floor on these albums, on these records is very, very low. The vinyl is quiet. And I really think that helps define what we hear. And I really do believe that this is, and I'll get to this point when I do the comparison, but I really do believe that this is probably, and I don't have all the copies, I don't have an original from 1969 copy of this. I wished I did. I might look for one. Um, but I think this is probably going to be a definitive copy of this album. Uh, sound quality is superb on this album, to say the least. It, as said before, if you're a Crosby, Stills & Nash fan and you really like this album, while it's available, $60 is really a good, a good deal, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit, is really a good deal for this incredibly wonderful album. Sound quality, in my opinion, of the Analog Productions is excellent. Keeping keeping in line with everything I've purchased, which is not all of the Atlantic 75 series, they've all, the ones that I've purchased, have all sounded really, really good. And in most cases, if I have an original or other copies, they've bettered them. And so when we get to the comparison, I'll kind of explain that a little bit. Anyway, my thoughts on the sound quality for this album is first rate. I think the jacket that you're getting, your $60 is buying quality, not only in sound, but in quality and appearance, texture and feel. That's my thoughts on the initial Analog Productions or on this Analog Productions album. Excellent, excellent album. Okay, what I will be comparing the Analog Productions Atlantic 75 version of Crosby, Stills and Nash 1969 debut album I'll be comparing it to a Steve Hoffman Audio Fidelity Gold CD that I just barely opened like three or four days ago so I could do this uh, comparison. So I just barely had opened it. 
And then my standby that I've been listening to for quite some time is a classic records version uh, of the album that I purchased back in all you know, mid 2000s, 2008, 2009, something like that. And this is probably going to be uh, obviously the better comparison uh, between this new uh, Analog Productions album. But let me cover, I also have uh, 192, 24-bit uh, version, uh, high-resolution version. I, I didn't really compare that. I didn't really consider that to be uh, anywhere near uh, the sound quality of these, even though it sounds fine. It's not terrible. It's not bad by any means. My real purpose for when I purchased that was to put that on my phone so that I could driver when I take my canyon drives and whatnot in my car I have something that I really enjoy listening to. Um, let's talk about this one first. As indicated I barely opened this up. Um, this uh, audio fidelity CD uh, of this great great album. Steve Hoffman did the remastering on this and to be honest with you I was actually shocked at how good it sounded. I mean shocked as heck. It really does sound really, really good. Uh, actually, it's quite a bit better than the high resolution audio file that I have, but it sounds really, really nice. Now, in no way, shape or form does it compare to the albums. Let me kind of show you a little bit about uh, and compare the covers from the uh, uh, classic records version of the album. It too is a gatefold, very similar to the analog productions version, not as thick, not quite as nice, but it's done very well. And as you can tell, it's not been open very much. I hope you can see that. Uh, it's a very nice cover, excellent quality, um, but not quite as thick, not quite as nice. And I'm going to compare the two for you. Um, so that you can kind of get a little view of this. The one right here in my left hand is the Analog Productions uh, tip on old style type jacket. And then of course this one is the classic records version. As you can see, colors are quite a, a bit better, uh, at least in my opinion, on the Analog Productions version of the album. Not to mention that this is a dual sleeve because of the 45 RPM uh, records, but it is thicker. Uh, it just feels more more uh, sturdy, I guess, if you will. And then, of course, the texturing uh, is quite a bit different on the analog productions as compared to the uh, classic records. Uh, let me show you the classic records uh, version of the vinyl. Um, this is 33 RPM uh, version. This album is a little bit thicker uh, because it is a 200 gram album and 33 RPM as indicated. This album too was remastered at the time by Bernie Grundman. The sound quality on the classic records is excellent. It's very, very, very nice. Uh, in fact, to be honest with you, in comparison to the Analog Productions uh, version, it's the Analog Productions version is better, uh, partly because of quiet vinyl and maybe a little bit to do with the speed at 45 RPM, but the differences, to be upfront and honest, are not that much different. Let me give you some really, uh, let me give you some examples of what I'm talking about. On Sweet Judy Blue Eyes, I think there's more air around the instruments or it appears to be on the Analog Productions version of the album as compared to the Classic Records version. When I get over to Guinevere on side two of the Analog Productions and, uh, and comparing that to the Classic Records, I couldn't really tell any difference to be honest with you. And that's actually one of my favorite songs. I thought uh, the guitars and the harmonization of the voices was excellent, excellent on both. I really couldn't tell a huge difference. Now, on pre-road downs on side B of the Analog Productions, 
I believe that the drums had better definition and a little bit better weight on the analog productions version than they did on the classic records version. And here again, I'm talking small margins. I'm not talking huge differences. I remember doing a comparison of the Foreigner album that we did quite some time ago. The differences were really significant. Not the case here. They are better on the Analog Productions version, but not by leaps and bounds as they have been on some of the other. Uh, Lady of the, excuse me, Helplessly Hoping. Harmonizations here I thought were excellent and maybe a little bit better defined, maybe a little bit more of a presence of uh, a, a stage being created on the Analog Productions version than on the classic records. But here again, I'm talking small margins. Uh, long Time Gone, what a great song. Uh, excellent, excellent song. Uh, I would probably say here, instruments seem to have a little bit better definition, maybe a little bit cleaner uh, than they do on the classic records. And I attribute, I, I attribute, excuse me, these differences to the quietness of the analog productions vinyl and the 45 RPM speed. I think those right there within themselves make a huge difference in what we're hearing, even though the differences are minimal. They're not large. Here again, and I've used this analogy before, I think if I was to set my wife down in front of both of these albums and play them, I think she would have a really difficult time distinguishing one from another. But when I did that to the Van Halen, the original album of Van Halen and the Mobile Fidelity One Step of Van Halen, it was extraordinarily quick, very noticeable. She immediately said, well, that sounds a whole lot better because it did. Here, it's, it's better when you sit down and do critical listening the Analog Productions is really, a truly a, a, a better sounding album than the classic records, in my opinion, through my system. And so that's my analogy. Now I've had a couple of, of uh, folks comment uh, as I was presenting my last video and talking about this upcoming comparison of why I don't have the Mobile Fidelity One Step. And the reason that I didn't is I had it on pre-order and when we all remember about a year and a half ago when the digital step that Mobile Fidelity uses, it kind of, uh, anyway, I kind of got tied up into that and I canceled my pre-order and didn't pick it up. However, having said that, I have purchased a Mobile Fidelity One Step since then, uh, just not this one. And I, I've been happy with the results of those albums. Uh, the Van Halen one's one that, that is obvious and I've, done a comparison video on that. So I have found uh, Crosby, Stills & Nash uh, One Step for a pretty reasonable price that I'm thinking of taking uh, and purchasing it and maybe doing a follow-up video uh, and just comparing that to this version of the album and just see where that kind of lies. And I know there's gonna be some other wonderful folks here on YouTube that are gonna be doing some comparisons with the One Step and the new analog productions as well as the classic records. But for my, for my decision, the, what I heard through my system, I felt the analog production sounds the best. Again, not by leaps and bounds. Uh, the classic records, if you happen to have one in your possession and you're happy with it as, as I have been, you're set, you're fine. It, it, it's a great, it's a great album. But the analog productions, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, uh, by the smallest of margins, is a better sounding album. And once again, a tribute to the speed, 45 RPM, and the quietness of the vinyl. Uh, either way, uh, both albums were remastered by Bernie Grundman. Incredible job, they sound wonderful. But uh, to this point, until I get my hands on a Mobile Fidelity one step of the album, uh, this would be the definitive copy of this album. 
Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that made sense to you. Please leave comments in the comment section below. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate your comments. If you like what you see, please go ahead and subscribe. We've got a few more videos coming up and doing some comparisons. I got some other ideas in, in line that I want to talk with, talk with all of you about. So anyway, please go ahead and subscribe if you would like and leave comments in the comment section below. Have a great day and thank you for being here with me today.